Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. And now, here's Jeff Crilly. Good Saturday morning, DFW. We've uh, we got a, a nice, cool, crisp day here in DFW, and we've got a, a jam-packed show. We're going to be talking about everything from saving for retirement to our, our Legal Eagle segment, one of our favorite segments. But we're going to start with entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I was a worker bee for 25 years working for somebody else, and I'm an entrepreneur, so this is something that I'm passionate about. My first guest is Phil Young. He is a serial entrepreneur here in DFW. He started uh, his... Uh, first uh, business here in DFW in 1989 and has gone on to to do very, very well. Phil, welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, happy to be here. Okay. So you are uh, the founder of Carter Young & Associates. Is that right? Myself and my partner, Greg Carter, yes. Awesome. Tell me about your company. Uh, well, let's see. So Carter Young & Associates is an employee benefits provider and we have office uh, right now. I'm in Dallas, so the Young is in Dallas and Greg Carter, my partner, is in our uh, Manhattan office. So we provide employee benefits for companies similar to uh, Section 125, um, FSA, HSA, you know, that whole space that people are familiar with. We have a plan called the Cypress Advantage Plan that allows uh, employers to give their employees no-cost uh, life insurance and um, um, uh, health and supplemental benefits like critical illness, uh, accident, plan, uh, policies like that that don't cost the employees anything, nor the employer. And uh, um, the dual benefit of that is for the employer that any any employee that participates in the plan, uh, the employer saves about three hundred and fifty dollars per year in okay. FICA tax savings. So it's kind of it's a dual benefit. So employees get free benefits. The employer saves uh, tax money, and uh, it's a win-win. It's been really great. We. We had actually rolled it out. I've been I've been in alcohol and drug rehabilitation business for 25 years, and we a friend of mine had brought this uh, product to me at my rehabs and said, "Hey, you need to look at at uh, offering this in your company." And I had actually been uh, I've been really uh, let's just say I was long in real estate back in 2008, mm. and uh, had been looking for something new to work on after uh, kind of the whole subprime meltdown, and so. After having this uh, Cypress Advantage plan brought to me, and we had it vetted through all of my uh, uh, experts there at, at First Step Counseling and at MedPro, and they said it looked like a really great product, give it a try. We rolled it out to my employees uh, right after one of my employees uh, had signed up for it. They'd only been uh, probably uh, enrolled for three weeks. Uh, her son, she was on the, one of the plan, one of the products that she was able to get for no cost, or for, I, I say free, but no cost, was uh, accident, uh, accident policy. And her son, uh, the, it, not only when you had the accident policy, the employees covered, but also the family. Well, her son was in a really bad auto accident and uh, had to be care flighted, uh, you know, to the hospital. He's, he's okay now, but at the time it was a big deal there. You know, and she was a very well-liked person in my company. And so everyone was very attuned to what was going on. And, um, the, she was actually reimbursed when it was all said and done through for, to the tune of about $10,000 wow. that she never would have gotten. And that's a lot of money, she, you know, for, for someone in my, it's a lot of money for anyone, but for someone, uh, you know, that was in her position, it was, it probably could, you know, easily her life savings. And so we, there was a certain lore in the company that, Hey, I was a hero for offering this new product to my employees. Right. And they also knew how much it helped her out, you know, financially. So, I had a real good taste right off the bat of what the Cypress Advantage plan could do to help employees. And so then I said, you know, I might have just found what I'm going to be working on next. And uh, over the last about three years ago, me and my partner, Greg Carter, decided to form Carter Young and Associates to offer this product to roll it out to the masses. It's really it's new to the marketplace. Uh, if you haven't heard of a product like this, you're going to be seeing them offered very soon. But we're very early to market on this. And. It's been really exciting, but you know we've had all kinds of crazy things happen. You know, uh, we have roadblocks and hurdles that have hit us over the last three years. Well, so. tell me this: with with uh, all the changes in healthcare, does uh, the demand for companies like yours go up? Absolutely. I think the, we're not like tied in with Obamacare or anything like that. But because of Obamacare, the, the Affordable Care Act, let's call it. Uh, everyone is just attuned to medical costs. And I guess everyone's seeing that deductibles are going up at companies, employee you know, uh, benefits are getting 
uh, slashed just because of the cost to the employers. So we're able to come in and fill in a lot of the gaps that an employer has in their benefit plan at no cost to the employee or the employer. So we can, one of the products we offer, just to give you an example, is deductibles. Are, we're up to $5,000 deductible at my company, and that's just because of trying to keep the monthly premiums down. Well, one of the products that my employees are now covered with for, for no cost through the Cypress plan is gap coverage, which is uh, a reimbursement for their out-of-pocket expense on their deductibles. So oh, wow. it makes our high deductible less of a hit to their pocketbook. So, but that's what's happening. You're just employ- we we are, are very pertinent because we're able to come in and either A, lower the benefits cost to the employers or the um, uh, fill in the gaps in the coverages that are getting bigger and bigger to, uh, that employers have to put in to help make it uh, to where they can even afford to to offer, like, say, major medical to their employees. My guest right now, Phil Young with Carter Young & Associates uh, here in DFW. Let's talk about being an entrepreneur and whether it's for everyone, because I know that, uh, you know, uh, from being around you and other entrepreneurs, uh, we all have the same uh, headaches. We all have the same <laughs> Uh, worries. Uh, how do you know if you're cut out to be an entrepreneur? I think when you're seven years old, sitting on the side of the road with the hand painted sign saying, I'll polish silverware for, 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 you know, to make money is you kind of have an idea. You might be an entrepreneur. I think that was the first venture I remember trying to get into. How did that uh, work? Uh, I don't think I polished a single thing that day, <laughs> but uh, I, I did sell some greeting cards door to door, I think later that year and did okay at but, uh, you know, it's funny. I, there's, 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 a, there's two schools of thought on this. One is you're either born an entrepreneur or you're not. Either you have the gene to be able to do it I'm sure, uh, or you don't. Um, I'm sure there's some teaching of entrepreneurship to an extent. And there's also some, you know, you hear some kind of pushback now about these entrepreneurship programs at schools that say they can come and just teach anyone to be an entrepreneur or anyone who enrolls in the program. And there's some people that say that's not possible either. I think there's neither side is 100% right. There's definitely somewhere in between, but it definitely takes a certain mentality and type A either. I guess uh, just don't give a, a, a crap about risk. You know, maybe right. as well, you can't be, you, you can't be worried about, uh, you know, losing your, your butt and, and being able to sleep at night if you're going to be uh, choose to take that plunge. What about uh, one question that I don't think very many entrepreneurs really ask or look at is the profit margins. And so, uh, you know, somebody says, boy, you could make a whole bunch of money in restaurants and then they get into it and discover that the labor costs and the food costs and the overhead is so high that they're really only making, you know, maybe a 10% profit. Whereas other people with, you know, just two or three employees can be making millions and millions of dollars and low and, and no overhead. Talk about, uh, you know, how somebody does research for coming up with a company. Uh, you mean just so the quiz, the question then exactly, how do you figure out what business you're going to go into? Uh, you yeah. know, it's um, for me, I, I've been, they were just kind of, ha- they I was pulled to them kind of similar with what happened with, uh, you know, with Carter Young and Associates with the, I, I've gotten to the alcohol and drug rehab business because my, I had a, a computer company at the time. My business partner was an alcoholic and gotten three D, DWIs and you know, had to go to prison for a year because he almost killed somebody in a wreck. And, you know, it just, it was, you, just, you, you can't sit down and, and, and plan that out on paper, I suppose. Um, but, you know, otherwise, I, I mean, if I were to, like, let's just say I wanted to figure out what I was going to go into, I would, they always say, do what you love. Okay. So, you know, find something that you're passionate about, because if it doesn't get you up early and keep you up late, you're going to have a tough time building a business around it. Um, I typically haven't found that it's the exact industry that I'm in that really drives me. It's just being an entrepreneur, mm. you're, the, learning a new business. It's been a super, really exciting learning an entire new industry. I didn't know anything about life and health insurance and, and uh, employee benefits, except to the extent that I offered them to my employees. But over the last few years, I've learned the whole industry. Or, you know, I mean, I've, when I say the whole industry, I've learned a lot about the industry, which has been really exciting. So for me, it's, you know, I've probably been in 10 different industries of businesses that I've either started or invested in. And it's just, it's fun to learn 
you know, a, 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 Absolutely. A, you know, about an entire new industry. I want to give a shout out to EO because uh, both of us are in Entrepreneurs Organization, and it's been a wonderful organization for, for me and, and, and I'm sure for you as well. Just being around other entrepreneurs because you don't know what you don't know until somebody else saves you from making a very costly mistake. Am I right? Exactly. Well, it's, what's fun is that, you know, you talk about that. There's definitely a personality profile that most entrepreneurs fall into. So it's really great to be able to hang out with that same type. It doesn't matter if you're male, female, what race, ethnicity, it's, it's, the, it's the gene that's there. So it's fun to be around that type of person. They're usually high energy, type A, uh, you know, risk taking, exciting people. And, and plus, the other big part of it, too, is just if you ever st- uh, start to get a little bit full of yourself or, or think you're really kicking some butt, go hang around some of these other entrepreneurs or some of the young entrepreneurs, actually, that all you will, it'll humble you quick. You realize you, you've got a long, you've, you've always got something more you can be doing or, or uh, you can really step your game up. And you, are, uh, uh, you, know, you learn that or really get that feel from being around. You know, I think sometimes people benefit from, um, you know, what was your worst idea or what was your dumbest mistake? What was it, what was your most expensive lesson that you've learned since you've been an entrepreneur? Oh, let's see. Well, the, the, it's it's a common adage, but they'll say that when you go into a business, when you start a business, expect it's going to take you twice as much money and twice as long as you think. And I've been into two businesses in the past. I come to mind underfunded. You thought it was going to happen quicker, and the idea was great. I, I look back and say I could, I, you know, it, it would be a huge success today had I been able to hang on. But uh, being undercapitalized when you go into something and expecting it to be to happen quicker than what you think, you've got to plan for the worst case scenario and be overfunded if that's a you know if if you're lucky enough to be in that position, or at least have the resources to get you over the hump until your business is able to support itself. Absolutely. Well, Phil Young with Carter Young and Associates. What's the website? Uh, let's see. It's www.cybenefits, like Carter Young at cybenefits.com. Phil Young, thank you so much for being on the Jeff Curley Show. Hey, Jeff. It was fun. Thanks. When we come back, have you saved enough for retirement? A lot of people think they have, and then suddenly they're going to work at the Golden Arches because they've run out of money. How to avoid that trap next on the Jeff Curley Show. More of the Jeff Crilly Show coming up. 